includes chicken and waffles. Our South Carolinian <gasps> says it. that if you visit Southern Fried Rattlesnake. Yeah, you heard that right. So today we are going to check out a video called 10 American Foods the Rest of the World Finds Weird. And I will hopefully give you some idea if we really do find those foods weird. As a person who is from the rest of the world, a lot of people in America, I think, do view America and then the rest of the world, which is interesting because I think the rest of the world is as diverse as America is within itself. I am not a huge trying food person. I am on camera. I've tried more food on camera in my adult life than I ever did. I'm very much the type who's like, stick with what I know. Like chicken nuggets, good, like chicken nuggets. Vegetables is a big thing. I haven't, I'm not a big vegetable eater and there hasn't been much call to eat vegetables on this channel or fruit. And I know that one's really controversial because a lot of people like fruit and I don't like fruit. What's wrong with you? Apples, bananas. I've tried a couple of fruits on Patreon. Do go check out patreon.com slash Diane Jennings for things like that. Why would people want to see more of you? I don't know. They're all freaking weirdos over there. She's traveling to the United States this week if you're watching in real time and there's gonna be a bunch of videos up about that if you also wanna watch them. But I'm not, I'm not a trier of different things. So I'm interested to see what comes up today. If meatloaf comes up, that's already on the list. Uh -oh. Interestingly, Chewy is not a big trier of different foods either because of me, I assume. He does not like the fruits that you would think that he would like as a dog. This is on the infographic show. Big fan of this channel. The link is in the description box below. When you were a kid, did you ever have that one friend in school who liked to experiment by mixing different foods together during lunch? Yeah. That friend who mixed ketchup with mustard in the same dish Ooh, with mustard. hot sauce, baked beans, and sloppy joes simply because he found it funny? If you did, you probably dared him to eat it afterward, right? In all likelihood, he probably just stuck his tongue out at you and refused unless you offered him five bucks to go through with it. Different combinations of food that don't make sense when put together often seem weird or gross to us. And what is construed as being gross differs across societies and around the world. This what we true. think is delicious or disgusting is often subjective and depends largely on our culture, along with where and how we grew up. Every culture has their fair share of idiosyncrasies. This is especially true when it comes to food. Some examples of delicacies around the world include frog legs and escargot in France, which consists of Never snails on a platter. In Japan, you can enjoy some delicious wasp crackers and fish eyeballs. Mm. In Scotland, you can have your try at the popular dish known as haggis, I which is basically it. a sheep's heart, liver, and lungs mixed with onions, oatmeal, and suet cooked inside the animal's stomach. You can eat kangaroo if you visit <gasps> Australia. People in Thailand eat- See, okay, like I, again, hypocrite non-vegetarian because I'm like, oh no, not a kangaroo, but like I eat bacon and that's pig. Uh, rashers and pigs are adorable and very intelligent just like dogs so hypocrite grasshopper seasoned with salt and pepper tastes like popcorn and let's not forget about china where you can eat anything from ducks feet scorpion starfish to even dog or cat there are many more examples of unique foods around the world, but you get the idea. Most of what we've listed would be considered weird for most Americans. But what about American foods that gross out the rest of the world? Believe it or not, bread is one of the items that Americans eat, which grosses out the rest of the world. Whether you sugary. buy a loaf of bread for sandwiches or buy buns for hamburgers and hot dogs, many cultures don't often turn to this item as a first choice. Yet Americans love their bread. Actually, in Ireland, we do consume a lot of bread. I remember I went to a thing called Irish College, which is a camp you go to in school where you just speak the Irish language the whole time. And I couldn't get over how many people ate like massive piles of sliced bread. However, the difference between American bread and generally speaking European bread is the sugar content. We've heard before how Subway had to uh, change its menu in Ireland because the Subway bread was classified as cake in Ireland. There's so much sugar in it. In the southeastern United States, there's a breakfast food known as biscuits and gravy, which is basically that, biscuits covered in Gotta gravy. Try it. Here with the infographic show, we've employed many people from all over the world, including the southern United States. One of our fun, eccentric writers for the team who came up with an outlandish idea for a flavored pillowcase is from the state of South Carolina and swears by this meal explaining that there's nothing she loves more than going to Waffle House and ordering herself some biscuits and gravy. She'll even eat it for dinner on occasion. She says the gravy makes the biscuits soft and moist, which makes it good to eat. 
She even adds butter to her biscuits despite the gravy already being on it. Hang on, I thought biscuits and gravy was a dinner food anyway? Is it not? Is it like a breakfast food? I didn't know that. This combination perplexes a lot of people throughout the rest of the country and around the world. Gravy, for most people, is probably best served as a dinner topping, not a breakfast one. Another peculiar southern dish mixing a typical dinner item with a breakfast one includes chicken and waffles. Our South <gasps> Carolinian says it. that if you visit the South and don't order this, you're missing out. It's considered almost a rite of passage for every true southerner. Sure, it may sound gross at first, she says, but once you try it, y'all will wonder why you never thought of it before. So if you like chicken and you like waffles, eating them together just makes sense. It satisfies your craving for both dinner and breakfast on a single platter, which is just bliss. She claims she's not the only one, and pretty much everyone she knows Cute in the region me. loves the stuff. The main problem with this dish, however, is having to make the choice of whether to use the gravy or syrup as your topping. Syrup. Either one is a possibility, but it's probably safe to assume that most people around the world and even in other parts of the United States prefer keeping these two meals separate. Next, corn dogs. If you've ever been to a state fair in the United Ooh. States, odds are you've purchased one or two of these. For observers in most other countries, the concept of a deep-fried hot dog on a stick would sound pretty weird and perhaps even gross. We admit that saying what it is out loud does sound a little disgusting. Yet many <laughs> Americans go crazy for a good corn dog. A food that confounds a lot of people is grits. Even the name. Ooh, going back on the corn dog there, I tried corn dogs in New York. I did like a whole load of cart foods in a video. Corn dogs, like they're okay. I didn't get the. I didn't get the hype though. It doesn't sound all that appetizing. If you don't know what grits are, what you're are not these? alone. It's essentially a corn-based porridge made of coarse cornmeal. Once again, this is mainly a southern Arch. dish, so we consulted our favorite southern writer who says that she's grown up eating the stuff. She claims that if you live in the south and have never tried grits, people look at you with surprise on their faces. She loves to eat grits as a side with her breakfast, and a popular dish in her area includes shrimp and grits. She oh. says it's not as gross as it sounds, that but it may gross. be an acquired taste for those who just aren't used to it. Given her affinity for these foods, one can't help but wonder how she managed to avoid obesity. Nevertheless, people from other places around the world would probably think the texture of grits is too odd for consumption. Okay, we think we've picked on our... I'm confused. What are grits? It's just porridge? Like, we have two types of porridge. Like, really... Like, blended. Like, like it's almost sand texture. And then you have, like, oat porridge, which is more like you can... The actual flakes of the oats. Is that the same thing? southern dweller enough for now, so we'll redirect our attention to a dish served on the opposite end of the country, in the southwestern side of the United States. That is, southern fried rattlesnake. Yeah, you heard that right. It's said to taste like frog's legs. The meat is often boiled off the bones before dipping in an egg yolk covered in salt, flour, and breadcrumbs. It's a deep-fried meal that grosses out a lot of people who dangerous? aren't used to it. A more widespread delicacy around the United States is the Hershey's chocolate bar. To many Americans, Hershey's chocolate tastes incredible, and odds are that if you have a girlfriend, she's probably sent you out on an errand or two to pick up some for her at some point. People from outside the United States, however, surprisingly report the brand as pretty poor excuse for chocolate. They complain that it has a tangy flavor and that it's too sweet. Now we did a video on Hershey's and why it tastes different than all other chocolate in the world before. I personally like Hershey's, but it's not the same craving as I have for regular chocolate, what I would call regular chocolate. Nevertheless, many Americans continue to love it, and we don't think this will change anytime soon. Our next dish on this list is meatloaf. It may uh, seem unsurprising uh, for those of us who were forced uh, to eat it as kids whenever we so paid sorry. a visit to grandma's house. Like grits, the name in itself does not sound too appealing. You may have a friend or family member who manages to make a delicious version of the stuff, but for many of us, the three words, eat your meatloaf, grinds our ears. No. A popular sandwich in America that's considered really weird across other countries is that of peanut butter and jelly. Many people in the United States grew up eating this as children, and some of us still enjoy consuming it as adults, especially when we don't feel like cooking. It's a very simple meal. You just take two slices of bread, slap some peanut butter on one and jelly on the other, and then crush the two pieces together into a delicious sandwich. For people in other countries, however, the combination of peanut butter and jelly seems nasty. They complain that the flavors should not mix together, and many are even more unimpressed with the choice of white bread that most Americans choose. Yet, I would say that PBJ is okay. It's definitely a thing you guys like for your nostalgia. I think in the same way as we enjoy a crisp sandwich with butter. Like, that sounds gross to you guys probably, but like to us it's like nostalgia from our childhood. 
and it continues to be a common childhood favorite. So what else is common in America but weird everywhere else? Believe it or not, Pop-Tarts make the list. Mm, like it's that. another one of those quick meals that many Americans love. All you have to do is take it out of the package, pop it in the toaster, and it's ready to eat. People in other countries, however, view this popular snack to being so sweet that it's sickening. The crust tastes almost like cardboard to them, and the sugar and frosting go way overboard for their taste buds to handle. So great we'll go it. ahead and wrap up our list with root beer and sweet potato casserole. Other people around the world complain what? that root beer tastes too much like a bizarre combination of licorice and wintergreen though it's actually made from the bark of the sassafras tree. Also common? perplexing to people around the world is that many Americans enjoy root beer floats, a combination mm. of the drink with vanilla ice cream. For those who enjoy sweet potato casserole, you might be interested to learn that other cultures think it's revolting. People in other countries point out that sweet potatoes already taste sweet, so why add more sugar to them and cover them with marshmallows? Needless mm. to say, it sounds pretty gross to those who are unfamiliar with it. Interesting. It really is all about perspective, isn't it? Like, if you grew up with a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, that would be, like, lovely to you. But to me, it's, like, mm, it's a bit smushy. Like, it's a lot of smush. And I imagine you feel the same way about the crisp and butter sandwich. Aw, Chewie's just being adorable. Anyway, there were a few there that I don't think I've tried. The big one is, of course, biscuits and gravy. I will get round to it. Let me know of any other strange food combinations that are unique to you in the comments that only you like. Something I enjoy is always putting a little soy sauce on the plate with my sandwiches. It just makes it a little bit more savory. Shout out today to a couple of very special people. Today's shout out goes to the squad over on Patreon. These guys are the backbone of the channel. Some of them I talk to every single month. I bounce ideas off them. They even catch wind of a couple of things that happen on the channel before they actually come out officially. I want to thank them so much for their advice, their support, and just generally really good banter and crack that I have with them every month. So thank Thank you so much to the squad. That's it for today. See you guys on the other side. Bye.